Hey, it's Eric from wanderwitheric.com. Today I'm in Boscawin, New Hampshire to check out the Hannah Dustin Monument. Since I moved to the Concord area, I've always heard about this and I've always wanted to come out here and check it out, but I never have until now. So let's take a look and see what we can see. Park at the Boscawin Park and Ride on US Route 4, just west of the Merrimack River overpass. From there, an easy path takes you past a field of staghorn sumac. This is the southern terminus of the Northern Rail Trail, which goes 57 miles to the northwest, nearly to the Vermont border. If you're quiet and aware of your surroundings, you might see some riverside wildlife, such as this blue heron trying to catch itself some lunch. This reminds me of the movie Stand By Me. There it is, the monument. So who's Hannah Dustin and why did she deserve a monument? Well, she was a housewife in Haverhill, Massachusetts in colonial times. During King William's War in 1697, Abenaki warriors raided Haverhill, killing many colonists and taking others captive, including Hannah and her newborn baby. They were forced to march into the wilderness, the Indians leading them north until they found themselves encamped for the night on an island at the confluence of the Contoocook and Merrimack Rivers, here in modern-day Boscoan, New Hampshire. Somewhere along the way, the Abenaki dashed the infant's head on the side of a tree, killing it. You know the old saying, hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. Well, Hannah Dustin wasn't going to take her kidnapping and the murder of her child laying down. Aided by some of the other captives, she led a revolt in the middle of the night. Grabbing hatchets, they assaulted the natives while they slept, killing ten of them and claiming their scalps with the intention of collecting a bounty on them. They then stole a canoe, traveling downriver only during the night, and made it back to Haverhill several days later. All the people that Hannah Dustin killed that night had one thing in common. They were not subscribed to the Wander with Eric YouTube channel. So if you don't want to put yourself in the same position, click that subscribe button now. Also, click the like button, share it with all your friends, leave a comment down below. Going places is pretty expensive these days, and your support helps make it possible for me. Hannah's fame spread far and wide, aided by colonial literary giant and Puritan minister Cotton Mather, who retold her story in his writing as well as his sermons. Hannah returned to her life in Haverhill, where she stayed until her death in the late 1730s. A movement to create a monument to Hannah Dustin began in the mid-1800s, at a time when the citizens of the fledgling United States were engaged in a lengthy and brutal series of conflicts against the Native Americans across the continent. Hannah's story was seized upon as representative of this struggle as a whole, and it was politically expedient to memorialize the event as a monument. An earlier monument briefly stood in Haverhill, Massachusetts in the early 1860s, but was removed after financial and logistical challenges. This monument in Boscoin, at the site of Dustin's revolt against the Abenaki, was erected in 1874. It was sculpted by William Andrews of Lowell, Massachusetts. It was the first publicly funded monument in New Hampshire, and the first statue in the United States honoring a woman. Unfortunately, it has seen quite a bit of vandalism. 
On more than one occasion, guns have been fired at the monument, disfiguring the face. In 2020, it was coated in red paint, some of which is still visible, though the main monument has been cleaned up nicely. I heard a rumor that this monument was covered in graffiti, but I'm happy to report that, except for a few small splotches of paint and a bit on the side of a tree, this place is pretty clean right now, which is nice. Thank you to whoever cleaned it up. This can in part be explained by the fact that Hannah Dustin is something of a controversial figure nowadays. On the one hand, she successfully escaped captivity, helped others to escape, and avenged the murder of her baby. On the other hand, she took the lives of several of her native captors. Did they all deserve this grisly fate? Historical events are always viewed through the perspective of the present day. Modern sensibilities tell us we should feel one way about what happened, but it's important to try and understand the context of the time period in question and the viewpoints of people who lived in that time. When you do this, you get closer to understanding the truth. Was Hannah Dustin a hero or a villain? You can decide for yourself. As for me, I don't condone vandalism of any kind. If everyone resorted to vandalism every time they didn't like something, our world would be pretty shabby looking. There are more constructive ways of getting your point across. Well there you have it, the Hannah Dustin Monument. It's a pretty interesting little piece of history of the local area here in Concord. It's an interesting piece of colonial American history, and it happened right here. That's pretty cool. And it's appropriately spooky for our lead up to the scary season of Halloween, which is my favorite time of the year. I've got a whole bunch of cool videos lined up in the future for you. Last week we went to the cemetery. This week it's the Hannah Dustin Monument. You're just gonna have to tune in next week to see what's next. As usual, I thank you for taking the time to wander with Eric today. I hope you'll join me again next time for another adventure. And in the meantime, I hope you remember to keep exploring. <laughs>